everyone. Welcome to Rain Francis Art for Kids. My name is Rain. In this series, Halloween Party, we draw and paint and create everything that has to do with this spooky season of Halloween. So let's begin. Well, it is the spooky season of the year, so today I'm going to show you how to draw this very sweet looking witch. So let's begin. This is what you'll need for today's drawing. You're going to need a piece of paper. I have a dollar store drawing pad. It's eight and a half inches by 11 inches wide. You're gonna need a pencil, an eraser, and if you have an old uh, paintbrush lying around that you haven't painted with, this is one that I got at the dollar store. I use it to just wipe off my page like this, get all the dust and little eraser bits off. You're also going to need some color. So today we're going to be using yellow orange, purple, brown, and I have an orangey brown here. You could use orange, you could use yellow, or you could use brown. I also have a black coloring pencil, and I have a fine tip black marker. I'll be using all of these today, so why don't we begin? Let's draw our witch for the Halloween season. Okay, so I've got my pencil and I'm going to start by drawing her head, okay? Now, her head is a circle. We're gonna be erasing also, so just keep that in mind. And the next thing we're gonna draw is her hat. Her hat comes in a semicircle around the top of her head, just like that. And then it kind of goes in a little bit then up, then we'll give her a little crooked top of the hat, and watch. I'm bringing it down here, and up. Okay, so that's her hat. And what we'll do right away is we'll erase the top of the circle here. I want you to erase that, okay? And if you accidentally erase something else, no big deal. You can just go ahead and put it right back in. So I'm just going to erase the top of that circle. Okay. And I erased the hat a little bit, so I'll just put that back in. There we go. Now let's put her, the buckle on her hat right away. The buckle is kind of in between this area here. We're going to draw a large rectangle and then a smaller one inside. Okay, and now we're going to put the band of her hat on. So in the middle of the side of the buckle is where the band goes. Now watch. Just two little lines like this on one side and two little lines like this on the other side. Okay, her hat is done. Now let's draw her hair. She's got long hair. So watch how I draw her hair. I'm just gonna bring it out here and then give it a few little pointy parts. Bring it up. A few more little pointy parts and then bring it down on this side and some more pointy parts here and up. Okay, I hope that wasn't too difficult for you. Now what we're going to do is we're going to erase this part of the circle here that's in her hair on either side, okay? I want you to erase that and again if you accidentally erase some of her hair or some of the hat you can just fill it right back in with pencil. Sometimes it's just easier to draw the shapes and then erase what you want after. Okay, let me see. I think I erased a little bit here. Okay, we're good. So why don't we go ahead and draw her eyes. She's got those two big oval eyes. I love the oval eyes. They're egg-shaped with another little egg shape down at the bottom. And we'll do that with her other eye too. There we 
go. And let's just give her a little smile for now. And maybe later we'll come in and we'll put cheeks and we'll give her eyelashes and things like that. But for now, let's leave it like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw her body. Since she's on her broomstick flying, watch how I do it. It's very easy. I'm just going around like this, down, up, there. Okay. Now a little bit of a collar right here. Now let's draw her broom. Now her broom is gonna go, we're gonna draw it through and then we'll do some erasing after. Her broom is gonna go like this. I'm putting a line right through her body here. And another very thin line here. We don't want the broom to be too thick. And then you can close that up. It's kind of a large rectangle. Actually, this could be a little thicker. I'm going to draw that again. Okay. Okay. So let's draw the end of her broom. On the bottom of the broom, we're going to draw the straw. It kind of goes like this and then up like this. And then usually there's something that ties it all together. So we've got a little ribbon or a little, some kind of cloth there that's gonna tie it all together. And then we can do the bottom of the broom. Okay. Now let's draw her hands. She's holding on to her broom. So why don't watch how I do this. I'm just doing little one, two, three semicircles, kind of like an, a long W with three parts in it. Here too. Okay. Now we're going to do some erasing. This side of the broom here from her hands all the way to the end, that's under her dress, so we have to, she's riding it, so we can't really see it. We're not supposed to see it, so why don't we erase that? And if you erase her hands or her dress, just draw it in again, okay? And as you can see, we drew the broom like this, and the line goes through her hands. Let's erase all of that line, okay? And when I say erase all of that line, I mean all of the lines that are in her hands. And that might mean you have to re redraw her hands. I used my hand, I should have used my brush. But you see what I mean? There are two lines going through her hand on this one and I've erased the ones here. And I don't wanna see the broom stick through her hand. So I'm going to erase these two lines also. I hope I explained that okay. And remember, if you erase her hand, don't worry. Just draw it back in. Okay, let's see. Okay, that works. And I'll just, this too. I would like to erase this line too. The one that's inside her dress here. There we go. So really the broomstick just comes behind her dress here, on the other side of her dress here, and in between. That's how I want it. You could, you could draw it any way you want, but that's how I want it. Okay? So we finished drawing her. Why don't we start to add a little bit of color? Now, I'm going to start with yellow. And the only thing that's really yellow here is her buckle. Okay? And so I'm going to draw, I'm going to color in her buckle yellow. There we go. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a second layer and all that means is that I'm going to color it in a second time. Coloring it in a second time, just a, a fancy way of saying it is to add a second layer of color. It just makes it a little more vibrant. Okay, so now we're going to take the orange color and we're going to color in all of her hair orange. Now you can have any color you want for her hair. I'm a redhead, so I always tend to choose oranges and reds when I do hair. <laughs> but you can make her hair black or you can make it brown. You could even make it purple or green, whatever color you want. Now if you're using coloring pencils, don't press down too hard. You don't have to, because like we did with the buckle, we're going to give every, every single area a second layer. We're going to color it in a second time, and that's going to give it a nice deep orange color here. And don't forget to turn your pencil once in a while. And the reason why we turn our pencil is to make sure that we don't wear it all down on one side. So if you're coloring, 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 turn, color, 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 turn. Try to get used to doing that when you're using coloring pencils. And if you're using crayons also, always remember to turn your crayon so you don't wear it down on one side. Because we want to keep our art supplies as long as we can, right? Everything is so expensive these days, we have to try to save as much as we can. Don't forget to turn your pencil and don't press down too hard. If your hand is hurting, you might be pressing down too hard. My cats are moving around and jumping around in, in the next room, so you might be hearing some banging. <laughs> Okay, so I've finished my first layer. I'm going to go ahead and start a second layer, meaning, like I said, coloring it in a second time. And I'm trying to stay in the lines. But you can see the difference already, can't you, between one layer here and two layers here? The orange is so much deeper and more vibrant. That's why I tell you you don't have to press hard at all. Don't forget to turn that pencil. And if you're using markers, obviously you don't have to turn it because markers don't usually need a second layer when you're using them because they have pretty vibrant colors. What color did you choose for your witch's hair? Are you thinking about Halloween already? <laughs> Or do you even celebrate Halloween? I am a kid at heart and I love Halloween. I love to decorate and dress up and make Halloween food. All right, so her hair is done. I'm just gonna go over a few areas for a third layer that I think might need it. Maybe down here, over here. Okay, so now let's take our purple color. I've got this kind of light, almost like a lilac purple. You can choose any purple you want. And we're going to color in these two areas here, just the band and her collar, okay? Let's turn our pencils. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and 
put a second layer of purple everywhere that I colored it in the first time. This is fun for the month of October. Every October, I do drawings that have a Halloween spirit to them. <laughs> okay, so the next color I'm going to choose is my brown color. Okay, and this is for her broomstick. So we're gonna color this area here brown, that little rectangle there, and just this area here, okay? And again, don't press too hard because we're going to be doing a second layer. Do you remember what a second layer means? Coloring it in as, oh, you see? I pressed too hard and the tip of my pencil just broke off. Coloring in a second time is putting on a second layer or applying a second layer. Okay, I'm going to apply a second layer of the brown. You don't have to. If you like it the way it is after applying one layer, then that's it. You leave it the way you want. This is your drawing and I want you to have fun. There's no pressure. We're not looking for perfection. I'm here to teach you how to draw and to choose colors and apply layers and especially to have fun and be proud of yourself. All right, the next color I'm choosing is that kind of orangey brown color that I have. And if you don't have an orangey brown color, what you could always do is you can apply one layer of brown and then one layer of orange on top. And you won't get this color and you won't get this color. And I'm gonna do a video on mixing colors at some point because I want I want to teach you how to do that. Now, if you don't want to use that, you can always just use yellow for the broom right here. But I'm gonna use my orangey brown for the broom here, for the straw. Coloring that in first, a first layer. And I'm coloring it in lightly and I'm turning my pencil. When you see me go like this sometimes, that's me turning my pencil. It's very automatic for me now. I just end up doing it every few seconds. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put a second layer of this orangey brown color onto the broom. Don't forget to turn your pencil. Okay, you see the difference between one layer and two? I just want to teach you that you don't have to press hard. And I want to teach you what a layer is because I think it's important to learn that. Okay. Now everything else is going to be black. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you something. You see her hands? I'm going to draw a little line on top, just like that, because I'm going to keep her hands and her face the color of the paper. You can choose whatever color. She doesn't have to be a white witch. She could have any color skin that you want to give her. You could even make her skin blue, um, green. <laughs> Sometimes you see green witches, but I'm going to leave her skin the color of the paper. So I'm not going to color in her hands or her face, but I'm going to color in the rest of her hat, including that little rectangle in the middle and her entire dress. And I'm going to start here with that little band on the broom. And I'm going to be applying a second layer everywhere. Okay, so let's finish coloring in our witch.
And the way I color is I color in little circular motions like this. It may not look like it when I'm going back and forth, but that's what I do because I personally don't like it looking like straight lines. Because sometimes when you color with straight lines, you can see the lines. I mean, sometimes you want to see the lines if you're coloring something that has lines in it, that's okay. But otherwise, I don't really want to see the lines, so I like to color in circles. Now don't forget to turn your pencil once in a while. Who's your favorite witch? And I'm talking about TV or movies. There are a lot of witches out there. <laughs> Do you have a favorite movie that has a witch in it? I think my favorite witch of all time is from the movie The Wizard of Oz. The Wicked Witch of the West. She was scary. Her name in real life, I don't think she's alive anymore because that was a long time ago, but her name in real life is Margaret Hamilton. She was the actress who played the Wicked Witch of the West. And don't forget to color in that little rectangle in the middle. But in real life, I think she was a school teacher. She loved kids. But in the movie, she was a wicked witch. <laughs> she was so mean to Dorothy. I have drawn her many, many times. I painted her once with watercolors. I'll show you a picture of that. See, she's a green witch in The Wizard of Oz. So I painted her green with watercolors. I'm starting a second layer of black on the witch hat, okay? And you can really see the difference. That's so much darker. Have you ever dressed as a witch for Halloween? Usually girls dress as a witch, but sometimes boys can dress as a witch too. I think um, a boy witch is called a warlock, I think. I have a witch hat <laughs> and I have a witch's cape. Actually, no, it's a Dracula cape. But I do have a witch hat that I pull out every Halloween. It's so much fun to dress up. I don't paint my face green though. That's something I will not do. Oh, and I bought, I went to this, the best place to get stuff for Halloween is the dollar store, I think because it's not expensive and they have so much. The only thing is they start putting their Halloween stuff out in September, I think, or August. Okay, I'm done the witch's hat. Now I'm gonna continue and do her body. Last year, when I was at the dollar store, I saw this really neat broomstick. I'll show you a picture of it. Isn't that cute? It's a nice little decoration. And I can show you a picture that I did. I have another, well, I have several YouTube channels, but I have another art channel and it's, it's mostly for advanced maybe and for adults. It's not made for kids, 
but you know some of the things on there can be done by kids too it's called rain francis art and last halloween i drew a whole bunch of scenes from um, there's an author named edgar Allan poe i don't know if you've heard of him but one of his most famous poems is the raven and i don't know if you know it but I took some of his short short stories and his poems and I drew scenes from them for my Rain Francis art channel. And I dressed up for each video. <laughs> and one of them, I, I think I dressed up as a witch. If I can find that photo, I'll show it to you now. I'm just going to apply a second layer here. I think our witch is looking really nice. She's not a scary witch. Don't forget to turn your pencil. We're using a lot of black in this, so if you have to, you can stop and go and sharpen your pencil if you need to. Mine's getting a little dull, but I think I'm okay. I think I'll be able to finish our little witch here. I'm going to be careful around her hands because I don't want to get any black in her hands. Because like I said, I'm leaving her skin the color of the paper. Don't forget to turn your pencil. Okay, I am done with my witch here. I'm done coloring her in. What I'm going to do is work on her face now. And for that, I'm going to pull out that black fine liner pen, um, marker that I have. You can use any marker or you can use your black coloring pencil if you don't have a marker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline her eyes and her smile with my marker. And I'm going to actually color in the pupils of her eyes black. If you watch my drawing lessons, you know that I love to use these big oval eyes. I think they're really cute. Okay, so why don't we give her some eyelashes? Maybe some on the bottom too. She's a pretty witch. And why don't we give her some cheeks? Now, to show cheeks, you just do a semicircle at the end of the mouth. Just like that. Now, what we can do here is we can outline her hands a little bit so they show a little better. There we go. And I think I'm just going to outline the sides of her head here, just so they show a little better too. All around maybe. There we go. Just so it's, it stands out a little more. I'm really, really happy with my witch. I think she looks really cute and it's a great drawing to do around Halloween. So the last thing that we always do is we sign our work. I want you to always sign your work, always be proud of what you've done because you've just created a beautiful work of art. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, my friends. And remember to mom and dad, if you post your kids' art on Instagram, please don't forget to tag me. I would love to see it. The link is in the description below and in the About section of my channel. So we'll see you next time on Halloween Party. Thanks for watching. Bye.